Okay, so I'm going to talk about the um, prison system and the way that they have the involuntary mental institutions of today where they involuntarily detain people without charging them with crime. You can't really fix one system without fixing the other. So that's why I'm talking about it together. You cannot fix one system without fixing the other due to the current structure and function and process of law. Obviously laws need, are going to be need to be changed. Prisons need to be more therapeutic in general. And we need to get the laws off the books that should not be on the books. Things that are of no business to anyone else other than those consensually engaging. Prostitution and nonviolent drug issues, if you will. Not only will that free up innocent captives, but we will make available the necessary resources to really tackle the real issues we face. The violence, the hardships um, that our citizens are uh, dealing with today. Okay, for the prisons and the voluntary, keyword voluntary, underscore voluntary, mental check-in facilities, whatever they're going to be called, I mean, um, you know, counseling centers could be a, a, a term, a phrase, other people may have better terms, phrases. Anyone who commits a crime needs to be charged with a crime, period. That needs to be known. I do not care if you're telling me, you know, their state of mind is this or their state of mind is that. Unless you can prove that they were literally remote controlled by someone else against their will, you know, the individual needs to be charged with a crime. Otherwise, we would charge the person who's like doing the remote controlling, if you will. We need to have a standard baseline regulation that all members of society must stand true to. This is about responsible freedom. Key phrase, responsible freedom. These facilities, both the new prison and the voluntary mental check-in counseling center facilities, both will have these elements below. This is the ideation that I envision. Obviously those in prisons for crimes, you know, convicted, we're gonna have more security and, you know, stricter lifestyle setups, if you will. So, therapeutic counseling is a main key. We cannot force people to talk, yet we can strongly encourage it. Only 100% completely voluntary on the pharmaceutical line of things. If there are people who have brain problems and we do have new substances or treatments that can help them, that is one thing. I will tell you this though, that the drugs that they're using today are torture devices. That's what I said, the, the majority of the drugs they're prescribing to these people today with that they're labeling as mental or whatever label, majority of these drugs are torture devices and they cause more problems than than you started out with if there was any problem to begin with so you know I, I see a whole new line of you know yeah, they're, they're just beginning to develop these uh, new stem cell technology now we're talking voluntary stem cells not you know things that are <laughs> involuntarily taken from people and what have you but there's a whole new line of biochemicals and uh, steroidal things that are coming out in that neck of the woods. You know, I'm not a scientist. We'll bring the scientists in and talk. No, I'm talking about for people who it's like clear they have. Now you still can't force those things on people. You got to, but you can, if you can make the appeal to someone who maybe does, someone who does have an actual traumatic brain injury or what have you, that is what it is. You know, if someone is comatose sitting there and you're going to do something, well, that's one thing. I mean, that's, they're not conscious. They're not able to do, you know, that's, Again, that's a whole nother category. I feel that, you know, introducing herbals and herbal treatment remedies in that realm could potentially help a lot of these people. But primarily, I think diet health has a lot to do with this, our behavior. I personally advocate a plant-based diet, you know, and we are what we eat. Just like some people are affected more by certain pharmaceutical chemicals, there are some of the genetic structure that they may be triggered more by these animal products and 
you know, it's the biochemistry of what is what it is. It's the chemistry. It's like the, you know, the blood, the flesh, the the fluid from that animal. And if you don't think for one minute that there's a connection of you are what you eat, well, I would ask you to rethink your thoughts on that. And one day, I feel science will prove what I'm getting at here, what I'm suggesting. And of course, all the, the entire uh, therapeutic lines of art class, poetry class, gym class, gardening, etc. cetera. Um, there's a whole line, you know, some people, for some people it's training. They, they never even had the opportunity to go to a, a further their education and learn and gain something. So that, those are elements as well that we would incorporate into these new therapeutic systems that I'm talking about. You cannot hold people in captivity without charging them with a crime. You just can't. I mean, you can do it. Obviously, it's happening in our world today. But what I mean when I say you can't, it will come back around and kick you real hard one day. That's my speculation. So I strongly advocate against holding people in captivity unless you're charging them with a crime. Now, I will get to one point below that I don't have all the answers. Like on suicidal people, we'll get to that in a little bit. <laughs> Um, this whole business of uh, someone being unfit to stand trial, well, the hell with that. They're as fit as they need to be for a jury to make a decision based on the facts. You know, the problem with some people is, in fact, that they have been drugged coercively or compelled forcefully, if you will, by these psychiatrists of the day, and they're on all these pharmaceuticals, and then they can't talk straight. Well, that's part of the reason why they're even on some of these individuals are potentially unfit, you know. Um, now, we will have special needs prisons for certain people um, who maybe fit that bill. I mean, this is going to be, there's a process to all of this, and it's a place for where it is. But at the end of the day, you have to still go by charging someone with a crime, or you can't be holding them. That's just not appropriate. It goes against and circumnavigates the principles of our U.S. Constitution. Our forefathers set up the Constitution for a reason, to protect and give vital rights to individuals. The death penalty must be eradicated um, for various reasons. I have a whole other you know, topic and video on that. Um, what about the person who's walking in the middle of the street? They, you say they don't know what they're doing or whatever. Well, you've got to charge them with a crime. You've got to charge them with what it is. What is that? Well, that's public endangerment. Someone who's waddling into the middle of the street, they're putting others in harm's way. So you charge them where the crime is due. You know, you're not, you don't look at what are they doing to themselves. This whole dangerous to self business, no, no, that's not going to be really a part of it. It's you have to focus on what are they doing to infringe upon society and the other individuals in society. There, it's a public endangerment. You have to get over the entire idea. You know, the whole idea of, oh, mother doesn't want, oh, mother doesn't want Junior to be charged as a criminal. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> so, well, if someone committed a crime, that is what they did, okay, period. Any crime of wrongdoing upon another could essentially be said to be insane, right? You name any crime of wrongdoing upon another and we can make a case of how that's insane, right, for someone to do that. Either you are justified with your actions, and in such a case it wouldn't be considered a crime, or you're not. For example, if someone, if you kill someone in the name of self-defense because someone's coming at you with a knife and you hit him with a rock or something in the name of defense, well then that's something. Now if you go out of your way to go out and wrongfully take the life of someone, well then that's murder. And, you know, so it's, it's always, a, you know, you look at the facts and that's why we have a fair trial by jury. You're allowed to present your case. We have to delineate, as I said, we have to delineate the real crimes, get the cr things off the books, like drug issues, um, off the books. If I want to eat a cannabis cookie, well, I'm not a criminal, so why, quit labeling me as a criminal, okay, in your 50 nifty United States. The person who is or appears to be suicidal, okay, here we go on this one. For minors, well, here's the main thing. You've got to try to talk to people with love and care. Give them something more to live for. As obviously something is lacking. I feel personally that when my theories are proved, such will significantly aid in that along, you know, in helping people, you know, not wish to suicide out or not have those suicidal tendencies. 
along with a whole slew of other things like people not wanting to do crime or what have you because of the nature of it. So check this link below, this link below, uh, if you would like to look at some of my theories. So if it's a minor, you know, that's kind of goes along the pretense of for the suicidal thing. Yes, a parent is kind of over a minor and a parent may use force, I mean, on some levels, right? A parent may use force on the child, but that's really a parental thing. When the child turns 18, they become an adult. So that's a gray area for me. I think, you know, I personally, like, again, I don't have all the answers. Let's talk about adults who want to do suicide, 18 and older. Um, we should say maybe, hey, it's like that lethal weapon thing. You want to jump? Let's jump, you know? <laughs> I mean, that's kind of, in the back of the mind, we should all kind of have that because it's like these people are sort of, there's so many people who need and want help, and these people are kind of, I don't know, we need to really talk some sense into them. <laughs> now, if you want to do this, let's talk about, we have a process. We have doctor-assisted suicide. Make it easy on them, right? If that's what they truly want to do. This is just an ideation. Maybe we would set up a system where we have like a 30-day waiting period and you know, say, hey, we can really try to talk them out of it. But if some people are hell-bent on, you know, wishing to suicide out, maybe we should let, let them. We say we don't let the person suicide out, and then he goes out and blows up a federal building. I'm just using that as an example. Then what are you going to say? You're going to say, oh, shit, we should have just let the guy suicide out, you know? I'm just using that as an extreme example, but it could be applicable in cases. We should really just let them know that we want to help them, you know, before it really comes to that. You saw a lot of these people never had the love, right? And maybe they needed it. Again, they needed the the caring, the love, you know, we got to trace it back and see where the roots of the problem is. But what is freedom? Should it be freedom of choice to suicide out? I guess that's the question. We have enough people who really want help. Um, and so I don't think we should waste too much money on those who are slashing arms or have suicidal tendencies. I mean, we can try to help. However, if they are hell bent on such, well, then they are. We need to preserve freedoms where applicable. Just the, I, you know, I'd want to make it clear to these arm slashers that we're not going to be keep using tax dollars to bandage them up and cl clean their infections and whatnot. I got guys with gunshot wounds being attacked violently that I need to tend to. You know, these people are, are self-inflicting harm on themselves. It's kind of ridiculous, right? If they truly want help, well, then that's, you know, I believe we can set up these voluntary check-in facilities. Again, as far as minors under 18, you know, maybe, you know, again, the parents would have reserved the right to be able to check them in. And you have to be very careful and we want to preserve protections for those children because we don't want to just still tromp all over the child just because they're under the parental control. A lot of the counseling really has to do with getting to the roots of the problem. What is the issue or issues that set someone off? Were they beaten or molested as a child? Did their parents not really have good parenting skills? Did they just sit them in front of TV and let them just aimlessly watch TV? You know, I'm just using that as an example, but it could be a valid um, trace, trace back. If they were unattended in that sense, or they weren't really guided, it didn't have proper parental, parental supervision. That's just, you know, one type of example. So we have to find out what the event or the events are in these people life, people's lives that triggered the issue and then help them recover from that and heal from that said event or events. So look, here, let's cut, cut to the chase. When I see the woman and make further contacts with the necessary personnel to do the great public social change plan, there will be less people remotely wanting to suicide out. Because why? Because of the bright future that is ahead that we are showing, unveiling, presenting. Again, you know, I've got to watch the video below for my theories. I'm, I'm astray today personally from a woman who, when I see her, it's going to be a whole new world eventually through the chain of events. To comment on the way things are today, drugs, you know, as in they're, in they're forcing syringes onto people, like I've had done to me, that is like a beating. It's the same thing as a beating. They use it to break you in, to get you to conform with eating pills. The majority of the pills then that they coerce onto you are wacky. 
and they do bad things to you, to your brain and other body functions. This comes from not only personal experience, however, witnessing a myriad of others, both in and out of clinical settings. Brain shocks, lobotomies, things of that nature. Again, it's, they're, this, they're like some sort of type of torture beating. Now, if you choose to voluntarily take a beating, well, that's your choice. Some guys maybe like to take a beating. That's their choice if they voluntarily choose the beating. Okay? However, you should not have such force upon you. If you are someone who did any of these medical procedures or druggings to someone who you claim, oh, well, it's for their interest and they're going to be okay with it when I'm done with it. Well, you know what I want to say to you? After the fact, you better as sure as hell hope that you're right or else they're going to come back after you with legal cases and maybe you're going to get criminal charges filed against you because that's where this is all going. You guys think the psychiatrists today think that they're all clean and whatever away from this stuff, but the only drug that I see is a, from my experiences in this industry, <laughs> the only valid use of something to be forced upon someone would be something equivalent to like a tranquilizer if someone is in the midst of doing violence. Like say someone is beating someone down wrongfully and you got to come and you stick a tranquilizer or a police officer shoots a tranquilizer gun or a dart gun, if you will. Um, well, that's an example of something, okay, to, in the name of defense to get the person off the other person and you have to isolate the person. That's one thing, right? But why would you begin to do any other forced drugging beyond the stage of tranquilizers? There is no zero zilch reason. All these things that they're forcing on people, these psychological drugs, whatever they call them, it, they're disgusting and it's just wrong. If you've never had experience to you, you know, maybe, <laughs> I don't know what to say. Uh, maybe you should set yourself up and go take a tour and see, but you can't really, it's going to have to be someone coming up to you, forcing you to the ground and forcing these drugs on you. How many of you out there today in America would like someone to just come up to you, force you to the ground, pull your pants down and shove a syringe into you. And on top of that, this chemical substance they put into you causes an extreme head pain and other physical problems with your body. How many of you would like that to happen to you? If you're not doing anything, you know, you're, you're sitting there just minding your own business, eating an apple or whatever the hell you're doing. <laughs> I'm just using that as an example. In other words, how many of you would like that? Not, I, most, I wager most of you would say no. Uh, the majority of you are going to say no, I would not like that to happen to me. So why are we doing it to these people and under the guise of this psychology system or psychiatry system or whatever the hell it's called, right? And you're, I don't know. So, okay. So let's get this system in order. I hope in great peace and there is room for forgiveness if there are any of these psychiatrists who did this and you know if you come to terms with yourself and you realize yeah you know this was i shouldn't that was wrong just like i did wrongful things in my life and i had to come to terms with those some of you who may be tuning in who are psychiatrists or who have you who, who've done this you just need to come to terms with what you have done and there is i believe just like in anything there's room for forgiveness now you can't force someone to forgive you but you can at least Try to make amends, say you're sorry, and do what you can do. Any judges or lawyers or any politician who's been involved in this, the same thing. You're in the same boat as the psychiatrists. You're the ones giving the orders and the laws to these psychiatrists to mobilize them. Again, I just hope in great peace. Just trust me on this. I, the main, everything that I'm saying here is in line with where we want to go. Do I have all the T's crossed and all the I's dotted? No. I'm just some lay person in society who went through an experience. And I'm here to say, to shine some light on this, to try to help. So um, in the future, maybe I'll sit down, we'll make these videos on with, in very professional settings with a lot of uh, professionals. Today, this is what it is. I thank you for your time and tuning in. Thank you.